while Donald Trump is truly, truly appearing to be off the rails and uh, frankly insane. Out of his, out of his mind. I mean, uh, 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 praising Hezbollah. You know, Hezbollah is very smart. They're all very smart. Out of his mind. And again, yeah. the fact that Republicans are embracing this guy uh, just is just ab absolutely crazy. You have all these arguments about Joe Biden and his age. Please, Please take a look at him over the past two days. He time. may speak slowly. He may lose his train of thought once in a while. That said, unlike Donald Trump, he actually knows he's running the government now. And he knows who he ran against in 2020, unlike Donald Trump, who still thinks he... What's his obsession with Obama, by the way? And that was the team from Morning Joe reacting to Donald Trump's latest speech. Trump, on top of praising Hezbollah, did seem to obsess over Barack Obama. And started when Trump claimed President Biden isn't really running things. Instead of keeping terrorists and terrorist sympathizers out of America, the Biden administration is inviting them in. You know why? Because he's got a boss. Who's his boss? Barack Hussein Obama. Barack Hussein. Barack Hussein Obama. Remember the great Rush Limbaugh? Barack Hussein Obama. He go, Barack Hussein Obama. Hello, Lee. Yes, Trump gave a shout out to one of his supporters in the middle of the rant. Everything about this speech in Florida was just weird. Keep in mind, America's closest ally in the Middle East, the nation of Israel, is in the middle of a war. Just days ago, hundreds of Israeli citizens and some Americans were slaughtered in a massive Hamas terror attack. And adding to the shock and grief in Israel and around the world, hundreds of people, including children, women, men, and the elderly, are being held hostage by the terrorists in Gaza. And yet at this moment, Donald Trump decided that instead of just showing sympathy or empathy with Israel, he would criticize Israel. Trump lashed out at Israeli leaders for not joining the United States in an anti-terror operation a few years ago that Trump, as president, watched in real time. We followed the whole thing, and about 15 seconds later, it was all over, and we did it. But I'll never forget, I'll never forget that Bibi Netanyahu let us down. That was a very terrible thing, I will say that. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu once disappointed Donald Trump, and that was a very terrible thing. Israeli citizens were just slaughtered. That's what should be terrible, not Donald Trump's personal disappointment in a fellow leader. Good grief. Uh, so when I see uh, sometimes uh, the intelligence, you talk about the intelligence, or you talk about some of the things that went wrong over the last week, uh, they've got to straighten it out because they're fighting potentially a very big force. They're fighting potentially... Iran, and when they have people saying the wrong things, everything they say is being digested by these people because they're vicious and they're smart. And boy, are they vicious because nobody's ever seen the kind of sight that we've seen. Nobody's ever seen it. But they cannot play games. So we were disappointed by that, very disappointed. But we did the job ourselves, and it was absolute precision, magnificent, beautiful job. Trump considers his actions as president to have been beautiful, and Israeli leaders' actions recently, including their public statements, have been sloppy. Well, in case you thought the Trump speech could not be more off the rails or crazy, as the team from Morning Joe described it, Trump also tied the attack on Israel to the 2020 election, which he described as rigged. And if the election wasn't rigged, there would be nobody even thinking about going into Israel. The election was rigged, very sadly rigged. Again, it's all about Trump and how sad it is that he lost the election and his big lie about it being rigged and his absurd claim about the impact on the Middle East came up again later in the speech when Trump talked about containing Iran. They wanted to make a deal so badly. If that election wasn't rigged, we would have had that thing done so fast and you wouldn't have any of these problems. But you would have never, ever had anybody attacking Israel if I were president. It wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. Of course, while Donald Trump was president, Israel was attacked repeatedly with Hamas rockets, and those rockets killed people. But revisionist history is part of Donald Trump's DNA, and making everything about himself is how Trump rolls, even in the wake of a terror attack. Still, according to polls, Donald Trump is leading the Republican presidential field by double digits, and in Congress, the top two Republicans seeking to be House Speaker refuse to acknowledge that Joe Biden won the 2020 election. Again, here is Morning Joe.
this is a, this party. This is a this is a party that is so lost right now and just wandering around aimlessly in right field. Yeah, and that's not the fringe. That's leadership. That's the two that's choices it. who want to run the caucus in the House of Representatives, the United States of America, won't say who won the 2020 election. Think about that for a minute. We've gotten used to it over the last couple of years, but that's absolutely insane that they're still running defense. They're still running interference for Donald Trump, who's running for president again. And by the way, I, maybe we won't play it, but he truly yesterday, an insane event. Yeah. And as you saw in the clips, it was absolutely insane. But that is where the once proud grand old party, the Republican Party, stands these days. The GOP is not just an embarrassment to America, it's also become dangerous. We have a major US political party that cannot govern and has a lunatic as the party leader. Whether it's terrorism or politics or threats to our democracy, these are indeed frightening times. By the way, Republican House member Nancy Mace of South Carolina just did a stunt that has backfired on her in epic fashion. I'm wearing the scarlet letter after the week that I just had last week, being a woman up here and being demonized for my vote and for my voice. Local moron labels herself an adulterer to protest people being mean to her. Check out that video at the link below. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.